On March 8, 1936, newlywed Sanglimutu and Angama welcomed the firstborn son in Kluang Johor and named him Sami Velu. At the age of three, Sami Velu and his family moved to Slangor, then again to Batu Arang at the age of six. At the tender age of 16, Sami Velu and family relocated again, but this time to Kuala Lumpur, the capital state of Malaysia. A brother, mentor and guardian to four younger siblings, Sami Velu learned life lessons which will prepare him for the day he was to become one of the most powerful leaders of our time. You see, uh, childhood we are very poor. Our family is very poor. We don't have time for any games or anything like that. What we will do, we go to school in the morning. Afternoon, we come back. Then we had a small ice shop. We go and work in the ice shop. You know, the bola, ice me bola. By the time I'm already about 14 or 15, uh, my father said, you better go to work. The family is uh, in a very difficult situation. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, go to school anymore. And then he fixed me up in a provision shop. That provision shop in 1947 uh, transferred me to a, a provision shop, their shop in Kuala Lumpur. They made me, they teach me to cook and ask me to be a cook. But if the food is about 10 minutes or 15 minutes later, they can't bear it. They come and kick me, get the thing done quickly. And you know? all very, very hard and notorious. So I was going on like that. One day I went to the central market. We used, I used to go to the central market before. Central market I bought uh, uh, one, one long ikanna and then I cut it into six, 16 pieces. I told them we got 16, uh, 16 pieces of fish in the curry. You don't eat everything because that is half is for afternoon. He said, you go to hell or what afternoon. They completely wall up the whole thing. The fish, everything gone. Then asked me to cook again for the night. And not only that, they, also, they slapped me, they kicked me, they pushed me in the staircase. And uh, I have bursaries and all that, but still I kept quiet. Uh, after that, I went to the market, central market again. It was about 5, 5.30. I bought another fish and while coming, what I did, you had a grilling chili, isn't it? What I did, I bought a bo box of brooklux. When I, when I tumbo, the I tumbo to chili, in the brooklux, I tumbo to samala. I add it into the curry. La. I add it into the curry. And then the curry was very nice because of the chocolate mixture. The curry was when they pull up the, the whole pot. So I was waiting, I didn't want to sleep, I was just waiting. In the night, about 4.30, they all got stomachache already. They are one by one, they were going to the toilet. What I did, I took my trousers and shirt, I got only two trousers and two shirt, and came out of the shop and I waited behind a tree. So about 6.30 in the morning, the Batuarang bus came. I got into the bus and I ran away to Batuarang. After that, I never returned to the shop. <laughs> Although he was not born into riches, Dato Sri S. Amivelu's closest friends believe that his virtuous personality has made him a rich man at heart. He moved with the anybody with a very perfect manner and give a respect to all, even the small boy up to the old age. During his time in the public eye, Dato Sri S. Amivelu has touched many lives and changed them in one way or another. He has always accommodated 
whatever requests, whatever questions posed by the journalists. So in that sense, I would say that my work was uh, made easy with that kind of approach which he had. During his free time in his earlier years, Dato Sri S. Samivelu did many a few things most regular people would find profoundly estranged. It was the passion inside everything he did that marveled those daring enough to come close to this figure. The other thing that I like in life is to draw. Because I'm an architect, I became an architect later. So I was very interested in drawing, sketching up plans, sketching up houses and all this. That is the time we had a lot of time. Evening five o'clock I come back. So I get around all the children in the area and coach them up in their studies. So we started with about uh, 15 children. Finally, in three months' time, it came to about 145 children. So we have no place in our house because my house is a single room house. Being a character that excelled in almost everything he put his heart into, acting was also a love that not many people knew Samivelu had. When the uh, television was introduced in the country, uh, we staged two shows uh, in the television. That is the first uh, Indian drama that came. It's called Poiva Magane Poiva. We had a confrontation between Indonesia and ourselves at the time. So I acted as a soldier going to fight. <laughs> but as a young boy, he didn't always excel in life. When I was a boy, I used to play football. And in my whole life, I've taken only one cup. I, am, I didn't shine in sports <laughs> because I think I'm destined to shine in something else. Sami Velu was one man with a big heart. His stern charisma and attitude towards others is what first got him into politics. In my early life, I never intend to become a politician. I think I like to be a social worker. So I used to go to Bhatti Caves, do a lot of social work, go to see the poor people and see what they suffer from, how do we can help them. And uh, after that, slowly I was moved into politics because somebody came and requested me whether I could uh, become a member of uh, the Bhatti Caves MIC branch. This is in 1961. So I uh, agreed to become uh, uh, a member uh, and the next week, they elected me as a secretary to the branch. So that is how my political work started. I was a social worker, then I became a politician, then uh, we could start contesting here and there. I contested in Slango six times to become the secretary of Slango. And all the six times, I lost. So the seventh time I contested, I won with three votes. Huh? At that time, Slango has only about 50 branches. But when I, when I left Slango, I had almost 800 branches in hand. So <clears throat> the development that I did in MIC made me to work more and more. MIC, or the Malaysian Indian Congress, is a Malaysian political party and is one of the founding members of the ruling coalition that has been in power since the country achieved independence in 1957, Barca National. His short-lived career as a Tamil news reader for the national news channel RTM further strengthened his position in the political realm. I read news in the uh, RTM uh, for almost eight to nine years. Only when I was made, when I was given a seat to contest in Sungai Sipun, I read the last news and then the next day I went and filed my nomination. He has never avoided the media under any circumstances. I mean, you would have noticed there were a lot of issues, controversies, uh, either in the party or in the ministry. And he has never for once told me that he wished to avoid the media people, the press. They are, they, are, they are part of his life. They are an important aspect 
in Datusri Samuel's life. For the last 30 over years, even before my time, in fact, he was even with the media, he was a, a news reader. He was even a news reader, and uh, uh, he, for him, the, the press has to be there with him. He has survived all this while, uh, knowing very well that the press has been in support of him. Sami Velu's political career has challenged him with many a great deal, sometimes building alliances and other times burning bridges. I didn't wipe out Panditan. Panditan was sacked because he brought a, a coffin box to the MIC headquarters. But later on, it was all forgotten. He and I became very good friends. Even his last hours, I see him every other day. And then uh, when he was sick also, he called for a big meeting and then we were holding each other and then they, I still treat him like a brother. He's a good man, but some misguidance here and there. But after that, I, 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 I did a lot of uh, things together with him. He's very friendly. Then even though he uh, looks like uh, he gets angry and all that, but he wants you mad with him, you join with him. Is a gathering and all that. He is very nice man. But behind the settings of the political arena, his duties also gave birth to lifelong friendships with the likes of Dato Harun Idris and Tun Dr. Mahdi Muhammad. You see, as I have told, I have no change in my mind about uh, Dr. Mahdi. I still call him Dr. Mahdi because that, that, is, that is very close to me if I called him like that rather than Tun Mahdi. I have said that he is a nation builder and that working with him was the greatest history of my life. And he's a great thinker and he's a very hard working Prime Minister that the country has ever seen before. And he is angry over certain things, so he is just blasting me with that. But I am not upset with it. I am a very close friend of uh, Neto Harun. Dato Harun Idris. Dato Harun Idris and myself, we are so close. For an election campaign, May 10th, there's an election campaign in Brickfields. Uh, <clears throat> so a lot of opposition fellows were there. Dato Harun and myself were supposed to speak. First I spoke, they threw a stone, then I moved. And then secondly, when Dato Harun went to speak, then there was another stone came. I moved that to Harun and I got it here. You see, that is how this, this one again. And that to Harun uh, likes me so much. And whenever he was in trouble, I always go and see him. I be with him. And he's a very nice man. He was the Mantibusa of Salango. In my house, he educated my brother. My brother, the lawyer who died recently, was educated by Dato Harun. My love for him is very great. And he, that is May 13th. I finished the news at 6 o'clock. I came by my motorcycle. I went to the house. He was in Hale Road, you know. I went to his house. So his wife was there. I said, Kaka, bang mana? I said, bang atta, sabi kiting hola. So I went up. When I went there, Dato Harun said, Sami, you better go back. Don't loiter around here and there. Go straight home. So I went home. When I went home, I didn't even reach my home. The problem started. Chowki Road, it started. So there was a curfew. We were all in the house. But the curfew time, I never stay in the house. Because the police will come and pick me up to go and read news. Sometimes we read news five hours. Because every time that there is a, there's a news, we have to read. We have to inform the people what has happened. Telling the people not to move out of the house and all these things. His active role in MIC Embarsa National allowed him to win the Sungai Siput parliamentary seat in 1974's general election, 
leading him to end his career as the Tamil news reader, but at the same time open the doors to greater things. Sami Velu took on his first cabinet role in 1979 as the government and housing minister and later became the works minister, a position he served until 1989. Following this, he became the energy, telecommunication and post minister for six years. Then in 1995, he was appointed once again as the works minister, the longest serving position in the government. The achievement. Oh. As a cabinet uh, member and also as a minister for works, I think uh, I have done uh, uh, work to my satisfaction. I really work to implement the projects. That is a very important era where uh, Dr. Mahade was trying to uh, implement the North-South Expressway, the Penang Bridge, and uh, many other projects were on at that time. We were also doing the East-West Highway. In all that, I have participated fully because I have been very good with my, with my people in the Public Works Department. And uh, they are very obedient. From the Director General right up to everybody, we used to work in the evening, discuss how best we can get implementation done. And also, then I became Minister for Energy, Telecommunication and Post. When I was there, I also did privatization again. I privatized the, the TNB, privatized the telecommunication and also post. All the three major departments were privatized during my time. It's a very, very interesting ministry because I had the opportunity to meet people throughout the world because telecommunication is a very international operation. Somewhere in Kanna, I believe, uh, it was a few years back, many years back, where he attended an event and he was rushing back to Kuala Lumpur. He came by car. Now, halfway back to KL, along the highway, he realized that there was this lady who wanted his help. So he decided, he told the driver, turn back, go back to Kanga. Maybe the lady will still be there. So the driver turned back and true enough, the lady was there sitting alone with her son on the pavement, on the road pavement. The lady knew that Datusi Samuel will come back. She, she saw him there, she met him there. Datusi Samuel was very shocked to see her there because it was uh, a difference of about almost an hour or so, and she's uh, more than an hour, I think, and she was there. So what Datusri did, he brought the boy, the son, to KL, educated him, paid, financed his education, sent him to UK, and today he's a PTD officer. And being the MIC representative in cabinet, Samivelu never forgets his duties, which is to help the Indian community. You see, the most interesting thing uh, that when Indians were 